everything? I think so, yeah. All right, good. Howdy. Hey, Ray. Howdy. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. Here at RTO. RTO. In Toronto. In Toronto, Ontario, Canada? Yeah, I'm out of I'm out of Austin. I'm out of my apartment and not at work. Out of I don't country? get out often, so I'm happy to be here. All right, so this is the Ray interview where I use uh, my own questions and community questions. And we, Shout uh, out to the cult of Ray, by the way. I didn't know it existed until a few months ago, so legit sign. He is our god if you're in the cult. If you aren't, we'll sacrifice you. <laughs> but, you it's know. a little brutal, but all right. I'll so our first question is by uh, the user Padophilio, and right. uh, he asks, what was your life before Achievement Hunter, and how did you get hired? Uh, <laughs> before Achievement Hunter, I went to, I finished high school, whatever. I heard about Achievement Hunter my first year of college, and then uh, I just started making community videos or whatever. And I, I got to, like, I worked at GameStop, I worked at a bar, I worked at UPS, and all of those obviously didn't pan out. And then for the last year before I got hired, I was unemployed. So I was living off of a few hundred dollars a month. And tacos. And, yeah, the dollar menu at McDonald's. And uh, I was under contract at that time, so thankfully I got a little extra money from Jeff and them. But, yeah, that's all I lived off of for about a year or so. And then my unemployment ran out, and I'm like, Jeff, I've uh, been working for you or doing videos for three and a half years, working for you for one. Either, you know, I'm going to ask for a job, I'm going to be that guy. I need to ask for a job or I need to get a real job. And then thankfully they were able to take me in. And now I work there. So all those hours of hard work and playing video games actually paid off. So and, uh, breaking your thumbs. Bra breaking controllers, more like it. My thumbs, th if I broke my thumbs, I'd be thumbs screwed. Steel, huh? Yeah, thankfully we're fine. All right, the next question is uh, by Darklink574. And he asked, what achievement on the Xbox 360 are you most proud of? I just, just before I came here, I perfected Super Meat Boy. So I'm pretty happy with that game. That game's pretty brutal. The kid achievement, uh, where you have to unlock the, the kid from I Want to Be the Guy, that was an hour of rage. That was, it was like one in the morning. Probably not the best time to attempt that. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy I got that. So uh, as of recently, that'd probably be my favorite one. There's probably more from way back when, but I don't remember that far. I, I played like over 600 games, so it's hard to remember what I played and what I got. So as of right now, I'll go Super Meat Boy, the kid achievement. All right, I'm sure our fans won't forget that. Yeah. An hour of rage. Yeah. I can get mad. It's just, I don't, you know, usually at home. I'm just like, God damn it. A lot of cursing, a lot of punching my desk. So. Good guy Ray. Doesn't take his anger out on Gavin like Michael. All right. The next uh, question is by Brunty023, and he asks, you were once a community member before. What advice do you give to, like, other community hunters to try to get hired, to get, like, uh, popular yeah. and noticed? When, when, I, when I started, the site was just created, so there was only a handful of people, maybe, like, 10, if that. Now there's probably hundreds. So if you want to stand out, you have to do something different than what other people do. What I give, I, I say Franco, for example, because he made his own series, Five Facts, and it was really good, and Jeff liked it. Now it's its own official show. So, like, anybody can do achievement guides, and that's fine, but if you want to stand out, either do something in the achievement guides to make yourself stand out, or maybe make your own series, because uh, everybody's doing achievement guides, everybody's doing things to do, and uh, this is, is, this is, this is, is I, this is serious. I don't know what that is, plural. So if you can think of an, your own show or do whatever you can to stand out, just separate yourself from the group because there's a lot of people doing this now. As thankfully when I did, it was only like six of us. So it made it much easier for me who's not that creative. I'm like, oh, achievement guides. So. Well, I'm sure it's more than just um, doing something different. It would also have to be the personality, consistency. Personality helps, Maybe yeah. jokes. Also, uh, yeah, obviously, like, any, like I said, anybody can do an achievement guide. It's being entertaining. Obviously having good equipment is not necessary, but you definitely want to be able to capture an HD. In 2013, it's like you don't want to do iPhone side or iPhone vertical or standard def. So if you're really serious about it, you should definitely invest in a, an HD capture card. There's a whole bunch you can get for like pretty reasonable prices. And then uh, just be, you know, just have some kind of personality and don't be like, you know, don't just, don't, don't make it seem like you're reading from a script. It's usually easier to work with somebody else, like do co-op or uh, co-commentary, so that way you can bounce off of each other okay, okay. so definitely um, if you are gonna go the route of like an achievement guide then uh, definitely do something like that and you definitely want to have decent equipment somebody to bounce off of and you know just have some personality if, if you don't like it just re-record it you know you don't have to the first one doesn't need to come out and even if you record like eight guides before you actually publish one that's fine just you gotta start somewhere I watched my first guide from four years ago terrible don't watch it it's abysmal but uh, it's good to see 
what I started at and then what I'm doing now. It's good to like the evolution, I guess. So started from the bottom and now he's here at sure. RTO in Toronto. <laughs> it worked. So um, going on what you said, uh, investing your capture card. Yeah. Do you think that's necessary now that the Xbox One has its own capturing um, technology inside of it? Should a uh, community hunters now uh, invest in a capture device for the 360 mm -hmm. or wait uh, to get a seven or sorry Xbox yeah. one uh, well since the Xbox one isn't out yet and we don't all don't have our hands on it we don't know exactly what it does we don't know the the limitations if it has any if you do want to start recording now I would definitely recommend getting getting it now because obviously you know it works with 360 and there's tutorials for everything and I'm gonna assume without knowing anything that you can use a capture card with the the Xbox One, so even if it has the you know the capabilities or whatever, if it doesn't work so well, it's like, well, at least I have this, I know how to use it. So if you're super serious about it, I would say get a capture card. You can get a Posh HD PVR or an Elgato game capture. You know, those are all like around two hundred dollars if you shop around, and they work great, and they're very simple to use. But I mean, if you do want to wait for the Xbox One, you can, but there's like no guarantee that it's gonna work as you want or it's gonna look great. Where with these items, you know, they work fine. All right, interesting stuff. Um, what capture card do you use? We use Black Magic Intensities, which go with yeah, they're pretty intense. Uh, they are, they uh, they work with PCs and Macs. Uh, Gavin, everybody in the office but me and Ryan use it, and it's inside their Macs. I use a, it's a Black Magic. I forgot what it's called, but it's external, but it works the same way. And Ryan uses an Elgato because his desk is the couch, so he just uh, plugs that in. The Elgato is. The Elgato is just like the Black Magic, except it's uh, it's external, and it's it's HDMI. It's just literally like two cords. It's really simple to set up. So, and I think it's the cheaper version of all that, if I remember correctly. I think the Elgato is like 160 ish. Yeah, about that. Yeah. So, when I started, I the Elgato wasn't around. Like I just used a hot podge and used component. I would recommend if you have an HD HDMI t or HD TV and like HDMI plugs and all that to get the Elgato because it's just you literally just plug it in. Like there's no software or anything you just download the the shit and you're good to go but uh yeah so we use the black magic intensities and i use something other it's some external black magic thing. i can't remember off the top of my head and ryan uses the elgato and it all works fine so it's really just you know you can do your research how, however much you want to spend you know what you're comfortable using and then like i said for whatever what you get there's tutorials for everything online on youtube and everything so like i have no I have no formal training in editing. It's just like, man, how do I cut this video? Ah, okay, it's S, thanks. It's so, all natural skill. Yeah, it's just all YouTube videos. Just look around and just learn from there. So, um, Going back on what you said, uh, Ryan's desk is the couch. Uh, any uh, chance of the Achievement Hunter office expanding? Uh, I mean, we need to expand. I mean, Lindsay does a lot of stuff for us now, and she's all the way in the back where Ryan's actual desk is in the studio, but he has the most comfortable desk in the office. When you think about it, it's a couch. So he's just like, he's just playing like this. He's like, so he's, a, we're all hunched over with a mic. He has a long mic that extends and he's just sitting back playing. And then, uh, yeah, we definitely need to expand, but I don't think Ryan minds having the couch. Cause it's, you know, he's not gonna have a couch if we get a new office, but yeah, we definitely need to expand. We're all like, we're all crammed. When all of us get in there, when all six of us are in there and then Lindsay's in there recording, there's like no room to move. Lindsay's like in the middle of all of us, just like this with the camera. So hopefully in the near future we'll uh, we'll expand. But as of right now, we're going to be six dudes in a small little office. All right. The next question is by um, Puma Warthog Four, and he says, "How many games have you completed in ter in terms of achievements on the 360?" Uh, I checked this recently. I think I want to say it's 416 or 417. That's counting arcade and retail games and if they add if they add DLC it gets taken off the list so as of right now it's 416 or 17 somewhere around there so yeah interesting so you've been uh, playing for a while obviously to get yeah, that much I've had uh, games that since since 2000 so like seven years I've had that account I guess and yeah I've been going for achievements ever since so though getting 300 and whatever I'm at 50,000 seven years isn't that good by comparison it's like 50,000 a year now, if you do your research, because obviously Achievement Hunter wasn't there. There's other sites like Xbox 360 Achievements and True Achievements that show you how to get, you know, their, their guides, essentially. All that stuff wasn't around when the Xbox came out, the uh, 360 originally came out. So it's like, I don't fucking know how to do this. I'm going to figure it out. And if you don't figure it out, it's like, I'll just put it away. I mean, if you look at Stallion, 83 has, fuck, I don't know, like 880,000 maybe somewhere around there. He's first place. Almost as much as you, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
he has more than double my uh, gamer score. It's absurd. But uh, yeah, he knows what he's doing. Like I think I put a lot of time into achievements, but that guy is that guy's crazy good. So you know. The next question is by a community member C Virtue, and they ask. Is there any game from uh, Let's Play or Versus that you will never play again? Uh, Match the Gathering. Probably never play that again. You guys will probably never see that because it was abysmal. And uh, there's a reason why it hasn't come out yet. Monopoly was just, I was lazy and didn't want to edit it. Magic the Gathering was just awful. Um, League of Legends I'll probably never play. I did not have any fun with that. I'm not good at MOBA style games. What about fid Fiddlesticks? He's your boy. He looked pretty cool. I saw a cosplay of him at PAX East. It's like, well, you're cool. The game I was not good at. Um, that's probably all I can think of, League of Legends and uh, Magic the Gathering. I mean, I'm willing to give anything a shot, but, I mean, if it sucks, it's like, well, you know. YOLO. Yeah, might as well. I mean, it's, it is my job, so it's like, no, you're fired. All right, I'll play it. Um, is there a reason why... Um you guys don't play that many Kinect games. If you have, I don't know if you have. Is it because uh, the office space yeah, or? There's, there's no room at all. To, Jeff, uh, Jeff did guides for the Fable Kinect game at the Journey, I think it was called. And he was sitting on the couch. You said? Yeah, he was. It was like a really weird setup. And there's a an, atta an attachment you could buy for the Kinect, which like zooms in the camera. And even then, it just wasn't working. So th there's just no space in that office. If somebody wanted to do a Kinect, even a Kinect guide, you need to do it at like home where you have space. So. Plus, the connect is just like, you know, it's a thing, to say the least. Do you think that um, next gen with the Xbox One, you'll move more into Connect 2 because the radius for the camera is uh, smaller and you yeah. don't need that much space? Well, I'm hoping they fix a lot of things with Connect. A big thing is it comes with the system, the console, which is good. So um, it could that could have put a lot of people off that you had to buy it separately. But I'm hoping they learn from the limitations of the Connect and make it, you know, even better. I mean, if it's coming with every system, you figure, like, people are going to use it. So. I mean, I'm excited to use it. Why not? It's free. Well, not free, but it comes with the comes with the system. There's a uh, talk about um, you have to have the Connect always um on yeah. for your Xbox. So um, you gonna put it in your bedroom? Uh, yeah, I put it above my bed actually, so it sees what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, I heard about that. I w I also read that you can, it has to be on, but you could turn all the features off. So like uh, can you explain, please? Like. Like with Connect now, you could turn it off where it's like it doesn't pick up your voice and it doesn't scan you, but it's still plugged in. So it's still on, but it's not on, if that makes any sense. It's really confusing. But uh, yeah, it always has to be on where that means like plugged in or connected, but the features can be turned off. Like I said, E3 hasn't happened yet, so all this stuff I'm sure would be, be explained in greater detail or we'll find out more by like November or whenever it comes out. So it's a lot of like rumors and stuff now. Jake from the site wants to know, do the Achievement Hunter members actually watch the videos from the Community Hunter channel? Uh, I know Jeff does, and then I do every now and then. I'm not sure about everybody else, but uh, yeah, because uh, that, that's all Caleb. Caleb goes through all the videos, and there'll be like a, a chunk where he'll be like, he'll upload videos, and there'll be like 15 videos on the feed, and then it might be a slow day at the office, or I might be at home, and I'll just scroll and click and see, see what I like, see what people are doing, and there's a lot of good stuff in there. Like, there's a lot of... Uh, the one I saw recently was, um, it might have been an older one, it was uh, uh, a dude and a girl made poke Pokemon art, just like we made Dan the Man. And, and Minecraft. In Minecraft? Yeah, Minecraft. Are those the same people that do um, extra achievements? Um, it might be. Shout out to I, them, by I, the way. I've seen extra achievements, or I've heard of it, me, I haven't seen it, but that's where we actually got the idea for Dan the Man. Uh, Jeff saw the video, and he's like, oh shit, you just like... I forgot how you do it. It's super simple. You take like an image and you put it in Photoshop and it like pretty much pixelates it. And they were explaining their process and they had a whole bunch of Pokemon. And Jeff's like, that's pretty cool. Let's do something. And that's how Dan the Man was made. So shout out to those people. So yeah, we, we watch it every now and then. Yeah. There's just so much. Like I said, there's a lot of people now. So there's a lot of content. So they don't hate you. It's just they're, they're working and uh, they do when yeah, they have time. Yeah, they do not hate you at all. Without them, they're us. And by us, I mean, I mean I regular was, people. I was a community hunter, so I, I understand. I understand the struggle. Yeah, you're right. Trying to stand out, yeah. The next question is by Hylians, and she asks, what advice would you give for people looking in a career in more of a video game atmosphere or companies like Rooster Teeth? Uh, well, for me, like, I, I went to college for a year. It didn't matter. Um, a lot of this stuff, like, you can't go to class to, you know. Can be, you explain? Be, be likable or, like, you can't learn a personality it's you just have to be be comfortable and in front of cameras and stuff like that and people and 
just just like the also for achievement hunter specifically, the editing we do isn't really a lot of editing. Like what what people what actual editors do for like the gauntlet, for example. Like you'll see their timelines and there's like all this shit everywhere and I'm like, I have no idea what the fuck any of that is. And then even with Gavin, you see like He's, he's tweeted, like, images of the, the Final Cut project for Minecraft, and there's, like, cuts and all these things here and there. And for for what we do, like, me and Michael and, like, uh, Jack and stuff, well, Jack's also pretty good at it. Michael and myself, we do, like, basic edits. Like, when Michael does Rage Quit, he'll record for half an hour and then just make cuts, like, you've seen. And then for me, for an achievement guide, those things are usually, like, three minutes long, so it's like, here's the video, cut out bullshit in between, maybe fade in, and that's really it. And all, all that stuff is, like, you know, you don't need to go to college for that. They all they taught me that at the company in like a week. So, if you want to get into something like this, it's I mean it is hard, especially for Rooster Teeth because everybody wants to do it. But um, yeah, I guess if there's a community like you can take the route I did or like Barbara or something like that, just um, just make yourself stand out. You know, make yourself known, put out some good content, and then over time, hopefully they recognize your work and then you know they want to work with you and then from there on, we'll see what happens. Or you could be like Michael and make a funny video and get hired. That works too. That's what YouTube's for. Yeah, exactly. That's what YouTube's for. I wonder if you ever got that orb in Crackdown. Just throwing that out there. Shh. Strangerhood Season 2. <laughs> All right. The next question is by um, Shankster. And he asks, he wants to, or he says, he wants to be an achievement hunter, but yeah. he doesn't have the proper equipment to yeah. right now. Is there kind of a way to kind of cheat around that? Without um, spending that much money. I know you said before that it's better just to invest in this. Yeah, but it's better to invest because I don't think there's any real workaround to capture your footage, at least with good quality. Uh, the best thing is just to save up your money and get equipment. You can do your research now, you know, learn what you can now, and then when you buy the products, whatever you're going to get, you can just go right into it. Though I will say, uh, well, I guess you still need the capture device. If you don't want to, if you don't want to, like, download or buy, like, really expensive capture or uh, editing software you can use something simple like windows movie maker or um, iMovie on the mac like that's what i use for a bit like yeah it sucks and it's bare bones but it'll teach you like the basics and for an achievement guide you, like i said you don't need a lot like you can produce one of an achievement guide in windows movie maker so unfortunately there's nobody to get around it just save your money and then when you finally have enough just buy everything and then just nerd out and get your get your thing going that's, that's what happened to me i remember when i got my my dazzle capture card it was like standard def that was like thirty dollars. I was super excited. I got all my cables going, and uh, yeah, it was, it was fun. It was fun. Do you uh, recommend any uh, capture devices or software for editing purposes? For uh, right now, I definitely. If you have HDMI, which I think you should by now, uh, Elgato. Like I said, really cheap. Um, if you want to go the, the the route of Black Magic, you can get Black Magics, but they're really expensive. But I would highly recommend the Elgato capture card. Like we use it at the office for PC Let's Plays, and Ryan uses it all the time. And it works great. So definitely that. And like I said, it's only like $160, maybe a little bit more. You just have to shop around. But yeah, the device is the capture card and like two cables. That's it. It's really simple to use. Sounds simple enough. Yeah. And uh, You can just download the software too online, the, the recording software. Elgato, Ray approves. All right. The next question and the last question by community members is by uh, SheGator. And she asks... Are there any future projects you want to work on involving Rooster Teeth or by yourself? Uh, that could be like from shows yeah. to like... The, I don't really like being on camera that much for like... People are like, why aren't you on shorts? It's like, I don't really, I don't know. Not really my thing. I don't like being on camera. I don't want to kiss a dude either. But, uh, but as far as like other stuff, Michael's Full Play seems to be really popular and people seem to like it. So maybe in the future I'll try one. I just don't know if I can be as entertaining as him, especially for an hour by yourself. Because he does that all by himself, where I think the only reason I'm, I'm funny is because I could bounce off five other people. So to be funny by yourself, I don't think is that easy at all. So I'm impressed that Michael can do it and do very well at it. So maybe something along the lines of that. It'll be something Achievement Hunter related, because that's where all my, you know, that's where all my marbles are. But, um, yeah, unless Jeff has, like, we, we talked about having a consistent, like, top ten thing. Like, we've done, like, top ten 30s toilets or something like that. Of the month? Yeah. Yeah, something like whether whether it's monthly or bi-monthly or something. Jeff and I talked about it. We just uh, we just couldn't think of categories necessarily, but um, yeah, maybe something like that. Because right now I just do guides, the Easter egg videos, and the This Is series. So um, and sometimes they're like, there's no games coming out, so it's like, well, fuck. So maybe in the future, some something along the line of that I think would be good. 
All right, the next two questions are by um, people that didn't want their names shown for um, obvious and not obvious reasons. Oh, boy. <laughs> Prepare yourself. Okay, the first question is, um, how do you build such a large following on YouTube? Was that before or after you joined Rooster Teeth? I had a YouTube account for a while where I just, you know, fucked around and I had one. And then the, the following, it definitely came through, through Rooster Teeth because all the fans, like, it definitely helped I came from the community to working there and then the fans, like, could relate. And then I guess people seemed to like me and then they went back on YouTube and looked at all my old stuff. So, and every now and then I upload a video there, but the whole following was just, like, just getting hired at Rooster Teeth and coming from the community and talking to people. People like the, uh... Like grapes. Pe pe people like to be interacted with. Like, fans, like, even if they say something stupid on Twitter and you respond, they go crazy. So I try to, um... You know, I, I try to like favorite tweets and people go crazy for something, something as minor as that's because of like, I read your tweet and I liked it, favorite. And they're like, oh my God, you favorited my tweet. I'm like, yeah, I thought it was funny. So it's just, uh, I don't know, I'm just being myself. I guess people just like me and it just came from getting hired and just talking back to the fans and, you know, acknowledging them and just not like ignoring them and pushing them to the side. All right, you hear that everyone. Follow at uh, AH underscore Brown Man for all your Twitter and Brown funny needs updates. Been needs. Oh, yeah, RandomVirusJr.com, go to it. You didn't catch me with that, by the way. I caught a lot of people with that, a lot more than I thought. People will click anything. Well, good guy Ray, so. Yeah, not, not for much longer at this rate. Foreshadowing. So, um, next question is, if every rose on the planet were to die, what would you do? Probably just off myself. Just put a gun to my temple and pull the trigger. Or I would... I'd probably pop out of a cake like a stripper, just because I'd be ironic, and then I'd kill myself. I'll do like the da da boom, and it should be over. Yeah, but uh, what would Kurt do? Kurt, uh, she'll she'll be fine. <laughs> she'll find somebody else, guy or girl, whatever, whatever she wants. I mean, Yola, right? Yeah, exactly. She'd do whatever the hell she wants. I'm not stopping her. Now, um, I got a few questions myself to ask. Okay. Um, is this your first time at an event not in America? Yeah, this is my first fan event as well. All the, the only events I've been to were the uh, PAX East and then RTX and New York Comic Con. That's all, obviously all in the United States. Um, yeah, this is my first fan event where I'm not like tied to a booth and I'm able to just walk around and socialize, which is cool. And my first event outside of America. So it's like a two for one thing. And it's a lot of fun. Now I see why Barbara did this every year and she was super excited when I was going to go. So, which by the way, she wanted to come here, but she's like elbow deep in RTX. And uh, Jordan wanted to come as well, but he couldn't afford it because the company didn't want to send anybody. But I'm like, uh, fuck that, I'm going to go anyway. So, here I am. Good guy Ray, coming to see his fans in Canada. Um, going back on that, do you think that you would um, go to other countries more regularly now? Uh, that depends if, one, the company's going to send people. If they don't, if I could afford it. Like, I always want to go to, to England for M uh, MCM. Is it MCM? Yeah, I think so. Uh, uh, Gavin, Jeff, and Ben went there last year. And they, has, they said they had a good time. So, you know, maybe. If the opportunity arises, I'll definitely go. But, you know, I'll go wherever they send me for the most part. So uh, Ray would go anywhere. He yeah, doesn't hate anywhere. anyone. Um, maybe maybe Cake, but, you know, that's not a person. Maybe, that's so. like, that's like too crazy. Hashtag fit for RTX. Fat for RTX. I've been gaining weight. Whoops. I'm doing it backwards. So uh, what's your uh, push-up count now? Um, I think before RTX, it was like 10, and then I was just out of it. We did pull-ups, too. I did two, and I'm like, yeah, that was brutal. Uh, it's probably gone down. I probably do like eight push-ups and maybe like one pull-up, and the pull-up would be me running and pulling. That would be my one, and then that's all my energy. I don't work out at all, as you can tell. Really? I couldn't tell. Yeah. So that's just all natural then? It's all, it's all natural, the guns, yeah. 100% Puerto Rican. Play, like, I just play video games all day. That's what I do, even at home. So um, I heard on the podcast, too, that after you did uh, your push-ups and pull-ups, yeah. you were the company standard? Yeah. It was it was early in the morning. It was like 9.15, and there wasn't a lot of people there. So uh, Bernie and, and Alan, our PR guy, came to us. He's like, we want to use you for something. I'm like, oh, God. He's like, okay, you're going to be our benchmark. And then they're like, do whatever. So I did it. My body hurt for the rest of the day, even though it was like 10 push-ups and like two pull-ups. I'm like, ow, I was so out of shape. But that was a that was a fun way to start the day. Just exercise. I just want to play my games. Leave me alone. Wish I could play games all day and get paid. Yeah, it's definitely, and definitely, people nice, like me. definitely a nice gig I have going. Uh, next question is, 
do you uh, have plans in appearing on more RT podcasts? I uh, I loved it when you just appeared. Yeah. Talk about your story, um, Gavin. They, Gus usually sends out an email, so if he asks me to be on it, I'll be on it. But I'm not, like, going to beg to be on it because, obviously, I, I do the internet box already. And I do that almost yeah. every week. So um, the the whole me going on to tell Gavin's story was just Bernie texted me in the middle of it. He's like, come defend yourself. It's like, well, I'm not really going to defend myself, but all right. That's, I did nothing wrong, by the yeah, way. Yeah, not my fault. Um, I stand by that till I die. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if they ask me to be on the podcast, I'll be on the podcast. But, I mean, they pretty much have their group, right? It's Gavin, Bernie, Gus, usually Barbara and Jack. That's, like, the main five. So, I don't know. If they ever ask me, I'm always down to do it. So, we'll just have to wait and see. Going back on that, do you think that uh, you'll actually appear on um, some more uh, RT videos, not just um, RT Life where you were in a cage? And, you yeah. Know. I mean, I don't know. The RT Life is – you always – it's always just like random, so I might just be in the background of something. But um, and same thing with behind the scenes, I'm usually on, but that's more achievement hunter. Um, you know, there's there's cameras everywhere. I'm around, yeah. so sometimes you may see me in the background. As far as being the focus of a video, I mean, probably not. Like I'm usually just at my desk. So unless they come up to my desk and film me just playing, then it wouldn't really be that interesting, I think. What about uh, immersion too? With that coming back? Uh, that's all. I know they maybe they might do something like special guests just like they did in uh, uh, uh last one the between episode yeah, yeah yeah like they had people like they had Megan with terry come and stuff like that and yeah yeah so um and even in the gauntlet they had monty for that one episode so maybe but at the same time it's like that's michael and gavin all the way and and bernie and and barbara and all them and um yeah i don't know like people people if they ask me i'll think about it and stuff like that like ah, i don't know maybe but for the most part i, I like just doing let's plays and playing games and anything that involves actual effort i'm not a fan of so uh i don't know we'll see in the future i really i really don't know i'd say they have to ask me and then i'll talk to jeff about it and all that the xbox 360 has been around for like eight uh eight years i think yeah yeah eight years eight years at the end of this year it's been a good eight years yeah it's the most important console to me in my life obviously it, it's up there i mean i think for me like super nintendo's number one I think N64 is number two, and then maybe not number 64. Yeah, and then uh, maybe the the Game Boy Advance or the DS I'd throw up there, but the 360 is definitely definitely up there. I mean, without the system, there'll be no achievement hunter. There'll be you know I wouldn't work there. There'd be no Ray. There'd be no achievements, which would be awful. But uh, yeah, it's it, it's a great system. I mean, it had the whole it had it had its flaws with like the red ring and all that shit, but they seem to figure that all out, and you know I still enjoy it a lot. I mean, I play it probably 10 hours a day every day so it's my it's my go-to system right now uh those have been some great years obviously what you just said and uh some other factors especially the games yeah you played a lot of games probably more than everyone else here yeah play a lot but of games. if you would have to uh tell us your top five game series not just games mm -hmm. no particular order yeah. what would they be uh on the 360 or just overall uh 360 so 360 it's not really a series, it's just one game, but I'm hoping it becomes a series. My favorite game on the 360 is still Shadows of the Damned. It's still my favorite. Uh, next would probably have to be... Halo's been pretty solid. You got three ODST, Reach, Halo Wars, four. I think that's all. Combat about. Evolved? Yeah, the, the anniversary. Don't know how I forgot that. Um, even though people shit on it, I do enjoy Call of Duty. I've played all of them from Call of Duty 2 to Black Ops 2, and I'm excited for Ghost. Um... I'm trying to think what else I play. There's a lot of I play a lot of like one-off arcade games, like stuff like like Bastion and Limbo. Like okay. it'd be cool if they were a series, but yeah, at the yeah. same time, it's like I don't want them to keep going because the game just ended so you well. You don't want them to drag on. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, I don't want them to like make a sequel just to make a sequel. Kind of like Gears of War doing a prequel to a prequel. Yeah, that's around the same time where God of War did the same thing. It's like here's the fourth game. It's a prequel because we ran out of ideas. Maybe I don't know, but um. Those are definitely the top three, and then, like I said, as far as other series, I don't. It's just a lot of one-off things, and there'll be other games I play like strictly for achievements, like shit like Hannah Montana. And uh, Avatar. Avatar, um, a game called Truth or uh, Truth or Lies or something like that. Aragon, like I like to collect bad games. Like if you look at my shelf, there's probably like three legitimate good games, and it's like a whole bunch of shit in there. But if I had to pick my favorite series. I mean, Shadows of the Dam is my favorite game, and I'm hoping it becomes a series, so I'll put that in there. And then I'm going to be cliche and go Halo and Call of Duty, just because every year, it's, uh, you know, you're guaranteed to get a good Bigger game. and better with more yeah, explosions. Exactly.
So I'm excited for whatever the next Halo game is going to be. Maybe it'll be 5, maybe it'll be a remake of Halo 2. I don't know what the hell it's going to be. Hopefully figure out at E3. And then, yeah, I mean, I play Black Ops 2 every night with friends. So that's always, that's my go-to multiplayer game. And then um, I'm excited for Ghost. And then Minecraft, of course. So, I mean, I guess that's... It's not really serious because it's one game, but they update it so much that it's just it feels like a new game every time they yeah add free it, they patches update. yeah exactly free patches and then the 360. I mean I know it's still behind the PC it is catching up but stuff like stuff like the Wither is in the 360. Like we just got the Ender Dragon so it'll be cool to fight another boss because fighting the Ender Dragon that three part series was a lot of fun. Interesting, very interesting. Um, going back on uh, what you said again with uh, your collection of bad games, I uh, saw on your YouTube channel that you were planning on giving some of those away. Yeah, I have a stack of games that I I had from uh, that Jeff sent me to do videos on, or uh, I bought for like on sale or something. I just never played it. It's like 15 or 16 games deep. Um, there might be more. Like I'm just still going through games. And as soon as I give these shirts away, when I get back to Austin, I'll probably send them out. Um, yeah, I have that stack of games. I don't know how I'm gonna give them away yet. I might. I might just bring some to RTX and like in a bag, and I'll be like, "Hey, you know, if you come up to me and you say like your contest or something, I'll be like, just grab a game." But I don't know. Yeah, I'm still thinking of ideas, but I'm definitely gonna get rid of them because you know, if I give them the GameStop, I'm gonna get like six cents a game. So I'm better off just giving it to fans. Maybe I'll sign it or something, whatever they want. But um, yeah, I still have that stack of games, and it's definitely gonna be given away at some point in the contest or whatever. Do you think that the community should try to reach out and uh? offer you ideas of how to distribute these uh, gifts? Yeah, I mean, like the like you gave me an idea for the shirts. There, there were plenty of people who gave me an idea for shirts. I just went with like a random drawing because there's only three shirts. But with something like that where it's 15 plus games, I don't want to draw numbers forever. And I'm not going to give like one person all of them. I want, you know, one person to get a game so a lot more people can win. So yeah, if you have any ideas, you can always like message me on the site or tweet at me or something. And I'll look into it because right now I have no plan for the games on how to give them out. I just want to give them out. Okay, okay. Or you could uh, make a form in the Cult of Ray. Yeah, you can join the Cult of Ray, and, you know, maybe I'll pick, like, five winners from there. Like, you're in my cult, so you get first dibs. We'll see. Exclusives. Exclusive, yeah. So I'll, I'll look into that in the future. I definitely want to try and figure it out before RTX, but we'll see. All right, all right. Now, um, next question is, yep. what do you think your gamer score will be before the Xbox One launches? Hopefully, assuming that Xbox One comes out, in November, because that's when usually the systems come out. I'm hoping at least 375, 400 if I'm lucky. 1, yeah, 400,000. It depends on what games come out as far as achievement wise. If there's some easy ones, if there's some ones I want to do. I mean, I still have a backlog of easy games that I want to get to, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll set it for 375, and depending how well I'm doing, 400. And then, I mean, achievements carry over to the Xbox One, so. I'm just going to keep going, but it would be cool to get 400000 before it comes out. All right, all right. Um, what if uh, achievements don't transfer over to the Xbox One? Uh, if achievements don't transfer over and you have to start fresh, then I'll just start fresh. I'll be like, all right, that sucks. Just start over. Oh, well, yeah. you uh, reacted differently. I yeah, thought you were going to freak out. and well. I mean, I have fun doing it, so it's like... Yeah. And plus, it's like a fresh start also so like back then when there wasn't like achievement hunter or anything like that and there wasn't a way to look up achievements you'd play a game you get like an achievement or two and you can't delete it so it's on your gamer card forever and then you see some ridiculous achievement and i'm like well fuck i'm not gonna get that there are some games i play strictly for achievements there's some games i won't play on my main account because i'm afraid if i'll get an achievement it'll be on my main gamer card i'm really anal about that but uh yeah, like, if it doesn't transfer over, I'll be like, well, it does transfer over, no big deal. Just start fresh and start over. Now, um, going back to the Xbox One, um, you guys are obviously going to get it for your yeah. business and everything. Yeah. Um, are you just going to completely phase out the Xbox 360s, or are you going to keep it around for games? Well, we got to keep the 360 around for Minecraft, our Minecraft world. It's not going to be on the One? Uh, as of right now, they haven't mentioned it. And even if it is on the one, I'm not sure we could transfer Achievement City over. Oh, yeah, you're right. So we'll keep the 360 around just for just for Minecraft alone, and then I'm sure there'll still be games that come out just for the 360, and then their games are just for the one. So I'm sure we'll have both for a long time until they, they phase out 360, which I don't know how long that'll take. But, yeah, so we'll have, we'll have both systems, and then depending if the PlayStation 4 has a lot of good stuff, which it looks like it will be, maybe we'll have that too, so... We'll see. Our desk is going to be cluttered with consoles. So are you also going to open up a trophy hunter office as well? Maybe. I mean, Gus, Gus did all the trophy stuff, but if we, uh, if trophies are big in the PS4, 
which I mean, hopefully they are because they started to gain um, gain steam on the PlayStation 3 then. I mean, maybe there will be. I mean, games like, you know, The Last of Us that comes out next Friday or maybe came out. Yeah, I believe so. It comes out next Friday. Like, that's a huge game and people are excited for it. So it'd be cool to do what this is for it or maybe some trophy guides or something. So we're just limited to... Plus, the, the, the PS3 doesn't record HDMI. Which, oh really? Yeah. When they had the rights to Blu-ray, so you would think that. They yeah, could you would think so, but yeah, you can't re- only on dev kits because it's a feature you could turn off. But okay. that could be another thing. Like we all record HDMI because the Xbox just you know plug it in. With the PS3, we'd have to get components and all this shit. So hopefully they fix out the PS4. But um, but yeah, I can easily see us getting a PS4 as well because there's important games like The Last of Us and then even games later on like you know maybe the new kill zone will be worth filming in or something like that so we'll have to see come come like november december we're gonna a lot of decisions are gonna get made with like what are we gonna get how are we gonna figure all this stuff out but it's gonna be a fun it's gonna be a fun time all right now um my last question what new games are you excited for on this uh platinum on this uh platform sorry on 360 uh my biggest game right now is saints row 4 I do like Saints Row. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a Saints Row fan over Grand Theft Auto. I thought Grand Theft Auto 4 was, was not good. But, uh, well, looking back at it now, it's, I don't think it was that great. But playing it again in multiplayer kind of... The multiplayer is great, but not the campaign? Yeah, multiplayer is great. I don't know, just stuff like the driving is just, like, I, I don't like the driving the game. And then, like, I think they got too... Realistic with too, it? Too realistic. They took themselves too seriously. But maybe that's what they were going for. And then stuff like... The cover system is all cluttered, and just to like turn around, it's a whole fucking ordeal because Nico bumps into everything. Where Saints Row is just like they don't give a shit. It's completely crazy and out there. And maybe people don't like that, which I understand, but uh, I like it a lot. I'm gonna just drop my water bottle there. No, I like it a lot. It's just more arcadey, more ridiculous. Do whatever the hell you want. But I probably go definitely Saints Row, uh, Call of Duty. I'm excited for Grand Theft Auto. Um, and like I said, E3 hasn't happened yet, so there's a lot of games that haven't been announced yet. But those are probably my top three right now. Just uh, Saints Row, Call of Duty, and uh, Grand Theft Auto. Oh, or actually, it comes out pretty soon, the Deadpool game that comes out at the end of the month. Deadpool game? Yeah, it's like a, a third-person action game. Like, I'm sure the game's not going to be anything special, yeah, yeah. but it still looks like a lot of fun, and, you know, Deadpool's a pretty yeah. awesome character, so I'm excited to check that out. Yo, love Wade Wilson. Yeah. Shout out to Wade Wilson, or Ryan Reynolds. Shout-outs here. Yeah. I do what I can. All right, so... uh. We're about to wrap up, not All the right. podcast. Okay. But if there's anyone here from the enormous crowd behind us, yeah. hello, enormous. Crowd uh, that behind. wants to ask a question to uh, Ray. Hello. Anyone? Uh, how about you? Fine, sir. I think your name is Jason. Uh, he has the microphone now. Has the Did you actually ask Gavin not to fuck Courtney? That was uh. Yeah, when I when I when I saw the picture. That was the first thing I sent them. I'm like, please don't have sex with Courtney. And he was like, okay. So, as far as I know, they didn't bang. Okay. All right. Anyone else? You. How did you discover Meat Spin? Uh, (laughs) It was shown to me, I think in high school, because that site is old as hell. And at first, like everybody else, I'm like, oh, my God, spinning dicks. It's gross. And then over the years, like... I rediscovered it, and I think it's the funniest thing in the world. And now I have like seven or eight different sites dedicated to link people to Meatspin. And people think they're safe. They're like, oh, I'm not going to click on that. It's like, well, I'll find a way to get you. It may not be now, but I'll get you some way or another. And I still think that's the funniest thing in the world. It's just too, it's just a spinning dick. It's, and a dick and, and an ass. It's just perf, it's perfection in website form. I actually saw the scene that Meatspin is based off of. That is not funny. It's a she-male fucking a dude. Not even two dudes. It's a man. It's a shim fucking a man. Just watch Meat Spin. That's fine. The actual scene, not funny. Pretty gay, actually. Believe it or not. Pretty happy, huh? Yeah, I'm sure they were happy. I wasn't happy when I saw it. I got uh, two questions. Oh, well, got two. Yeah, I know. That makes me really special, don't it? Um, one, can you come visit Vancouver sometime? Vancouver sometime, you see? Uh, there's an event over there, yeah. I'll see why not. And two, can you play a uh, custom game type I made in GTA for a Let's Play? Maybe. I don't know. Since there's no, like, there's no, like, it's not like Halo where you can say oh. If you, if you, uh, yeah, something's up, I have this. Um, since it's not like Halo where you can't, like, 
turn off the mic. If you can't file share, which kind of sucks, but if you, uh, either if you write in the comments or you post on Reddit, Jeff is always on Reddit looking for ideas and people have always, uh, have good ideas on there. Or you can just like, uh, like leave a comment on the side or on Twitter or something. Cause Jeff is always, since he's the boss, you know, he doesn't have to really make videos. So he's always on Reddit looking for ideas and stuff. So there's plenty of ways to submit your, uh, your let's play idea and maybe we'll actually do it. So definitely, you know, definitely send it to us and we'll, maybe we'll give it a shot. All right, next question. Make sure the mic is still on because I turned it off like an asshole. Yeah. Whoa, the cameraman has a question. <laughs> cameraman has a question. Um, I was wondering, what was the first Rooster Teeth or Achievement Hunter video that you watched? The first, the first Rooster Teeth video I saw was Season 1, Episode 2 of Red vs. Blue. The first Achievement Hunter video I saw, it wasn't even an official Achievement Hunter video. It was a community video. And it was Mike's, uh, he was Lopez55 back then. It was his, the, the, yeah, Mike Croon. It was the his dark the darkness guide. I forgot the name of the achievement now, but it's when you have to kill like seven dudes in the opening cutscene. Uh, yeah, with the shotgun. That was the first video I saw, and I'm like, "Oh, that looks fun and easy. I'll try it." So shout out to Mike, cause he uh, he was my inspiration, I guess you can say. And I've known Mike for way too long. Let's just say that. But yeah, that was the first achievement hunter video I saw, and that kind of led me to like, "This looks easy enough. I can do it." So shout out to Mike. I have the mic. <laughs> you hand it off? Oh, you're back. Why do you like Applejack? Uh, I liked Applejack at first because Mike hated her. And I'm like, oh, yeah, she's the best. And Mike would get really upset. And then I watched the show. It's like, she's pretty cool. I like her. Of course, everybody else hates her and thinks I'm an asshole. I don't know. It's a pony with an accent and a hat. You can't get better than that. And she's orange. She's not Fluttershy, too, which is always good. So, because it's that simple. Oh, one other question. Uh, can you sign my shirt? I can. Live signing. Oh, what's he doing? Signing the shirt. All right, Ray. Um, you've obviously met a lot of us here, and uh, we all we're all a fan of your work and achievement hunter and rooster team. I, <laughs> I literally just play video games and makes. I literally just play video games and make stupid videos all day. I can't even. I, it's crazy to think that I have, uh, that even Achievement Hunter has fans and like just me. It's like I'm just a dude that plays video games like everyone else. So it's pretty cool, very surreal. I can't, I can't complain. I feel uh, very blessed. So very blessed, huh? Well, thank you, Ray, for your time and coming to Canada. And uh, thank you for having me. Hey, okay. thank you for coming. And thank you for joining the cult of Ray. I oh, love you. Join the group. Or he'll kill you. I said so. Please. Join the group because I said so. I'm whispering.